Hello, denizens. I went to see Matt Walsh's film, Am I Racist? I arrived at my local cinema and I realized I had a dilemma. Of course, a 70-year-old white guy would go see it. I realized that I had to find a person of color to go with. I looked around the parking lot but couldn't find anyone to assuage the obvious anti-black racism I was supporting by attending this movie. I went in anyway. I have a next door neighbor from Zimbabwe. We've both lived here for 26 years. I could have asked Mike to go with me, but I didn't think of it. I guess you can call that systemic racism. I would have paid for his ticket. Anyway, I, I was hoping that am I a racist would answer the question. Am I a racist? Yes, it did. I'm not. What a relief. But I, I knew that going in. Then again, I'm not the audience for the race grifters who are featured in this very funny, cringe-inducing movie. It's a bit of Matt's previous movie, What is a Woman, combined with Borat and any number of Michael Moore documentaries. I, I'm not a huge fan of Walsh's Daily Wire screeds, but he's clearly smart enough, just like in What is a Woman, to let the people being interviewed hang themselves with their own words, and he gives them lots of rope to do it with. I will admit my bias against DEI and critical race consulting. What Matt has done is expose these charlatans to the light. They are used to hiding in the comfy confines of their confirmation bias circles, populated by mostly middle-class white women. And oh, oh my gosh, do these hustlers like Kate Slater, Brishia Wade, Sarah Rao, Regina Jackson, and the queen bee of race hustling, Robin D'Angelo, love their guilty white women. The only star missing was the Zeus of race baiters, Ibrahim X. Kendi, who changed his name from Henry Rogers, which obviously lacked the cachet to extract huge amounts of cash from gullible corporations. Like any good whoer, Mr. Kendi happily takes the cash left on the nightstand. I think you can gather from my tone that I'm sympathetic to Mr. Walsh's subject matter, but if I can be impartial for a moment, by not bringing in his politics or religion, Matt has uh, created a movie with much broader appeal than his Daily Wire videos. I, I, I have to give him credit for that. He is more fearless than funny, but I laughed a lot. I do have a problem with documentaries that embarrass its subjects, even if they are deserving. It's just, it's just the way I, I'm wired. I also give him credit for a sequence where he stayed in character as his DEI anti-racist consultant and spoke with someone whose uh, name escapes me, who argued against Matt's pro-DEI position with facts and figures. He, he, he said something along the lines of, uh, there isn't enough racism to go around, so they have to make it up, which is absolutely at the core of the grift in this movie. None of these people want to stop racism because then they'd be out of a job. Like the pharmaceutical industry, they are not interested in cures, only maintenance. You've seen the trailer, I'm sure. Matt dons a bun wig, bad glasses, and wool jacket to infiltrate several workshops. The first workshop sequence went on for too long. Uh, I was a bit concerned, but then it kicked into high gear. At the dinner party self-flagellation segment, uh, Miss Rao, sitting at the head of her private women-only dinner party, angrily spat out that all Republicans were Nazis and this country is not worth saving. This country is a piece of SHIT to the delight of the ladies at the table. There goes her invitation to Trump's inauguration. I mean, if, if he wins. Another thing you'll notice about these merchants of manure is that they all seem to hate America. I don't want to give all the details of the movie away, but suffice it to say, the guys in the biker bar were less racist than the anti-race hustlers, which was frankly comforting. Matt never asked if 
people of color could be racist. Maybe that was something left on the cutting room floor. Several of the victims have, as of this writing, deleted their Twitter uh, X accounts because of the release of the film. Seems they can't stand the heat. Many supporters of these flimflam artists have been using conservative as a slur to attack the film, which is ridiculous. Yes, a conservative made it, but the people in the movie, many of whom were paid their exorbitant asking fee, wrote the script. Well, Am I racist have any effect on gullible DEI infested pronoun policed companies like Google, Microsoft, and Apple? Perhaps in combination with Robbie Starbucks ongoing bud lighting of companies on Twitter X, but I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not certain. I heartily recommend Am I Racist? Till next time, denizens, be seeing you.